Waringal. It sounds like either a cool fantasy villain or a debilitating health affliction. Look, I don't know much about Waringal. All I know is they are a Korean company and they have a line of fountain pen inks with names that are inspired by literature. For example, there's a blue with gold sheen for The Great Gatsby and a red with blue shimmer for Dracula. Whereas The Wizard of Oz has multiple inks representing individual characters. Hi, I'm Irene, and the ink I have here is based on Hermann Hesse's novel Damien, and it's called Mature. There is one other in this series called Lost. I haven't read the novel, but I understand those names represent the main character's journey and growth throughout the story. So, yeah, no, I'm not going to talk about literature today. What I do want to touch on at some point during the video is packaging and design. For now, let me just point out the tools being used. The paper here is Clairefontaine's Triumph, and the writing instrument is a Kakimori brass nib in a standard nib holder. For those who haven't seen my previous ink logs, what I do is I select an entry from my softbound edition of the Food Lover's Companion for my writing samples. I know the Quick Brown Fox is a pangram, making it a useful and popular choice for sample writing, but I like doing it this way because it performs the double duty of demonstrating the pen and ink and expanding my culinary knowledge. Black beans. I couldn't think of anything else that even mildly related to this shade maybe black olives, but I think I already did that in a previous video. Anyway, I'm fine with black beans because I think they are great. In fact, I don't get to eat them often enough. I guess they're just not part of my cooking repertoire. However, I'm happy to have them as a side or in a main. Producer Mike makes really good homemade chili, and I always push for the addition of black beans. That, along with both red and white kidney beans, makes a great combination. I think white beans are also known as cannellini beans. Refried beans, bean salad, bean soup. I guess I'm just a bean gal. It makes sense. My older brother did nickname me Irinsky Chili Beansky, after all. When I was a kid, I mean. He doesn't call me that now. I want to talk just a little bit about package design. Perhaps at some future date, I'll dedicate a whole video to my most and least favorite ink bottle shapes. But for now, I really just want to mention that I find the wearing gold bottles very attractive. The square shape and basic label, well, you could hardly get simpler, but I love that the whole label shows the color of the ink, or a close approximation at least. The font is highly legible, and although I'm usually a fan of decorative elements, when it comes to product packaging, I can appreciate a minimalist approach. Yeah, anything from bar soap to ink bottles and beyond, they all benefit from packaging that's both practical and tasteful. That said, I can fall for flashy pants as hard as the next gal, but I'm trying to be smarter about it. And I'm bringing all of this up because, well, I don't want to name names, but there are some ink brands out there that could use help in that department. Just saying. The previous demonstration a moment ago was on Tomoe River paper, not all papers are alike, of course, so when it's possible, I try to demonstrate on more than one type. Since I'm in the process of exploring paper options, the lineup will likely change from video to video. For this part, I chose the Midori MD Notebook in A6 size. 
It seems to be popular for journaling, planning, and general fountain penning. Once the thin sheet of protective glassine is removed, you can see the notebook has an exposed spine with cheesecloth on the outside. I believe that enables the book to more easily lie flat. I don't know if I'd call it coverless, though, since the front and back are pretty heavy cardstock. Actually, as I understand it, it's the same Midori paper, just in a heavier weight. This wasn't intended to be a review of this notebook, so I'll just say that I like it. Although I haven't done much in this particular one, I have been using this same notebook in the A5 size, and it's been working great for me and my fountain pens. When it comes to paper, I generally prefer white over cream, but honestly, it's not a big deal, and it's certainly not a deal breaker. So, with these sessions, I often like to include an ink sketch as part of the demonstration. This time it was black beans. It's not a complex drawing, more of a doodle, really. I admit it, I was mostly farting around. But it got me thinking, there's an overlap, yes, where writing meets art. Some types of writing can appear very artful to me. Then there is graffiti art. I recall watching a documentary in the 80s and being amazed by the stylizations created with spray paint. But I think my fascination with textual art goes back to old-school illustrated advertisements, in part but also to reissues of Will Eisner's comic book, The Spirit. Originally created in the 1940s, The Spirit is, in comic circles, widely regarded as groundbreaking in its time. And one of the reasons is the creative way Eisner incorporated the title into his splash pages, in fact, Eisner was so well-respected that the biggest award in the comic industry is called the Eisner. Basically, it's the comics version of an Oscar. Personally, I sometimes like to add text to an art piece. I just wish I were better at it. These thoughts were, in part, brought on by a recent video from the Peter Draws channel. It's titled, Nothing Lasts Forever, where he experimented with the idea of impermanence in art. Basically, he created a piece on a whiteboard using dry erase markers. It was all very interesting. I find that Peter has a lot of fascinating, creative ideas. But tying into what I was just talking about, he also added a text element. Now, it wasn't a real language, just gobbledygook, but it looked like writing. Of course, he followed through and erased everything once he was finished. One might imagine a sense of loss or disappointment, but he said it felt really good and that erasing his work was the best part. This bottle of Waringal Mature was donated by channel supporter and friend Sarah Bailey. I've learned a lot about art and fountain pens from her and her YouTube channel. So what do I think of this ink? Well, I have yet to use it in a fountain pen, but from this session, I don't foresee any issues coming up. It worked great in these samples, and I adore the color. I find this shade of dusty, grayish blue so calming, soothing. It's like the opposite of aggro, which I have to say is a good quality in ink. There are enough things that push my buttons. I don't need ink to rile me up to. Claire Fontaine paper has been a favorite of mine for a while. And, of course, I continue to enjoy the heck out of the Kakimori brass nib. 
Each of these items, the ink, the paper, and the nib, is a pleasure to use. Put them all together, and it's a real delight. By the way, while sketching, I was reminded of the phrase, cool beans. I think it's been out of use for a while. In fact, I think the last time I heard it was from Goslin Mallard on Darkwing Duck. Now, there's a throwback. All the way back to 1991. I'd say good times, but those memories are bittersweet. Because I'm still cheesed off over never getting a Darkwing movie. I'm happy to share this ink experience. Thanks for watching. Until next time, don't forget to eat your beans. So you too can earn a cool as heck nickname. And stay fartsy, my friends.